Hello, I'm Hannah, and this is my spouse David, who I've invited to join me today for a new tag I'm calling Books with Friends. I'm especially interested in hearing people talk about how their friendships are shaped by what they read and how what they read shapes their friendships. I hope some of you will participate in this tag, pulling in spouses and partners or other friends to talk about specific books that mean something to you. Since you already know something about me and my literary taste, I thought I'd start by asking David about some of his own history with books. Welcome. Glad to be here. So tell me about a few of your favorite books. Um, well, there's Olive Kittredge by Elizabeth Strout, who, which is a, a collection really of stories in some ways that are thread together. And it's just, I think, a lovely portrayal of growing older and dreams deferred and marriage and uh, relationship. Um, and it, um, it's a very sparse style and different than many other things I like and just one of my all-time favorites. But on the other she end... She also has a new one coming out. Really? Very cool. With the uh, same character? With Olive? Yes. Please put it on her. <laughs> <I will. laughs> to, to get list. Um, on the other end of the spectrum, another one of my all-time favorites was actually recommended by Abe, our son, when he went off to college. And I asked him for what he's reading and what I should read, and he said A Hundred Years of Solitude. And I had read Love in a Time of Cholera, but picked that one up. Um, and after getting into it, just fell in love, and the rest of it flew through. It is, um, on a sentence level, on a paragraph, on the, and on the meta structure, the, the beauty, the magical realism, but the, the story, the, um, it's just a beautiful book. So those are two. So what books have you read that you hated? You know, I generally, if I don't like a book, I put it down. So I don't have many that I would say I hate it. But in high school, I was forced to read Tess. Um, and I know <laughs> Hardy is one of your favorites. But at that time in my life, being forced to read it, I think maybe having something to do with the uh, uh, injustice that the book deals with um, just rubbed me the wrong way. And if you just say the name... My stomach turns over. I will not go near that book. And what's really sad, because one of my closest friends is named Tess, but um, so I don't associate that book with her in any way. But if you try to get me to say the last name, which I cannot do, um, will not do. Sorry. Perhaps I'll get you to read a different Hardy. Okay, that 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 I try. <laughs> um, since it's nonfiction November, do you have any nonfiction favorites? Sure, I like both fiction and nonfiction. Um, the Spirit Catches You and You Fall Down is one of my favorite books, um, probably of all time. I was an anthropology major in college, and it came out soon after I graduated while I was a medical student. And as you know, and I think you've told you, um, even made a video on this for your channel, the book brings together cultural or people um, trying to communicate across cultural differences. Um, it was it's lovingly written. Um, it tells really important stories from different perspectives. I think her journalism side shows through, the humanity shows through, but it really had an influence on me on how I practice medicine and the importance of communication. So definitely one of my favorites. Um, others, um, there were some parenting books, um, since I'm here with you. Uh, that were really important to me. Um, Alfie Kahn, Kahn, Kahn? I think he's Kahn. Kahn. Alfie Kahn's Unconditional Parenting. Um, very powerful uh, philosophy that's put forward in the book about helping our children become successful, meaning not what we think is success, but truly thriving and living up to their own potential and not... Um, loving our children for who they are and not who we want them to be. And I read that at an important moment, and I think it um, changed how I related with Abe. Um, and another one also um, from the parenting book, um, Faber and Majlish, I think, are the authors, um, How to Talk So Kids Will Listen and Listen How Kids So Kids Will Talk. 
Um, it was great as a parent. It was just as great as a coworker and as a boss. Um, it's about nonviolent communication, I think, in a way that made it really accessible to me. So, two, I highly recommend. Well, since you've been talking about um, parenting and children, do you have any books that meant a lot to you when you were a child? Um, as you know, but you all out there might not know, I was not a reader um, as a kid. I'm a slow reader still and was late to reading, but uh, The Phantom Tollbooth um, has a place in my heart that will never and will never leave there. It was actually one of the books we talked about the first time we met, so mm -hmm. I like it for that reason too. And another book, um, later, when I was in high school, I read The Color Purple, and um, still one of my you know, an important book to me, but even more so because I think having read that gave us something to talk about that made you think that I actually could have a conversation about books or thought, deep thoughts, not just childish thoughts. So I'm really glad I read that one as well. Um, so have you discovered any children's books that are especially meaningful to you now that you discovered as an adult? Well, since I didn't read much as a kid, um, having Abe, I read many, many books for the first time as an adult and fell in love with um, everything from Goodnight Moon and uh, Goodnight Gorilla to um, the Harry Potter series. And we actually bought, or I bought, um, the first Harry Potter book when it just came out in paperback here in the United States on our first trip out of the house with Abe after he was born. So he must I was have just been, a couple of days yeah, past I, birth. Yeah, yeah he must yeah. have been, he was definitely under a week. Um, and you didn't like fantasy, and I knew that, but um, I fell in love with that book in the first paragraph and just had to read it. Um, and I took it home, and you agreed to let me read it out loud to you. It didn't and take I, me long to fall in love with I, it, too. It wasn't the first chapter, but... I, I think after a few chapters, it, it swept you away too. And we read every book, all eight of them, out loud to each other, most of them in bed. Um, when I had my way, a chapter a night. When you had your way, many chapters a <laughs> night. Um, but they, I, there's, there, they remain um, among my favorites, but especially the first one. I hated waiting for the new ones to come out. They would take a couple of years, I think, for one. Towards the end there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then we were having to sneak them behind Abe's back because he was all, you know, the first one. too young right. for the older ones. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Interestingly, the next question is, can you talk about a book we read together as an audiobook, a uh, read aloud, or as a read along? Um, can you think of any adult books? That... No, of course. Um, so Harry Potter would have been my first answer for that because I do associate, and we've actually had a tradition of reading aloud to each other um, before going to sleep. But the one that was you know, by far the most important was when we went to Ireland, we took Ulysses with us along with three guidebooks to Ulysses. We didn't take guidebooks to Ireland. We took guidebooks to Ulysses. And while we were in the north of Ireland, we I, almost every day, I would read chapter one, chapter one, chapter one of the three guide books, and then we, I think sometimes even out loud and sometimes to each other mm -hmm. um, by ourselves, would read that chapter in the next day. And so yeah. we were there for about two weeks and got through a little more than half of the book, I yeah. think. And My memory is that we read, each read the guide books separately, but then read the, the book, book aloud. Aloud. Choice. Yeah. Um And definitely the hardest book I've read, but the work that we put into it made it really worthwhile. So I associate that fondly. Um, mm -hmm. And you still owe me the end. <laughs> yes. Yes. Are there any books that you associate with the beginning of our friendship? Well, I think all books make me think of you because, as it, you know, I said, I, I was not a reader until I met you. But part of that early introduction of you reeling me in, um, you gave me Jeanette Winterson's The Passion, which is a yeah. short book, which for a slow reader, um, but wow. Um, just a complex, complete dive in, do not leave uh, the, the covers of the book. Um, and it's also quite passionate um, <laughs> as well, so a really nice start to a relationship. And then soon after we read that one together, I think you gave me a few other Jeanette Wendersons. Um, I don't know how we originally discovered it, um, but A.S. Byatt's Possession, which was about academics, modern uh, grad students, we were both in grad school, 
um, and their relationship and then being paralleled in the, the mystery of the book in an older um, set of relationships. And uh, even though it was a really, for me, thick book, um, and we didn't read that one out loud, I think we read it sequentially, um, I just loved the book and the writing in the book um, and the ability to read something that long, but I associate it with you, and I think because it was about a relationship, so, still. That's lovely. Um, are there any books I've recommended to you that um, that have become important to you? Sure. <laughs> um, wow, where to begin? Um, okay, two. First, um, which I think your viewers will know, uh, your favorite is Jane Eyre, and <laughs> it took me a while to get to it, but I eventually worked up the courage and read it and have appreciated ever since. Ever since, it's one of the few books I've read more than once. Um, just um, a complete work you know, with a, a really wonderful um, voice, narrated voice. Um, and then the other is Toni Morrison's Beloved, which might be the second hardest book I've ever read and one I'm incredibly glad to have written, written, <laughs> read. You um, worked, a after we got through Possession, you started my education, I think, not just in reading, but you slipped me Southern writers, um, and especially Southern women writers and African American women writers in particular. Um, and Sula and Mama Day um, were, um, their eyes were watching God, and were earlier in that, and all books that I still appreciate and, and think about. But then there was Beloved, and um, I am so glad you worked me up to that point. It is an incredible, incredible. Um, is there a book I recommended to you that you disliked? Ah, um, I don't have enough time to read books I don't like, so I would probably put anything down. But I think you know me well enough that um, I cannot think of a book that you recommended that I actually read that I didn't at least appreciate or like. Um, so what's on your nightstand right now? Oh, um, well, the one that's still on the nightstand, but I just finished, is Autumn by Allie Smith. And as is often the case in our house, there are books that are just lying around that you've taken in from library halls. Um, and this one I don't think was gotten for me. In fact, I'm pretty sure it wasn't for me, but I was just looking for something and it was sitting there, so I started reading it. Um, really um, great use of language and puns. Um, funny, but the story matter isn't funny. Um, it's a amusing on relationships and getting older and death. Um, set in a very specific moment in time, but um, which is adds a layer of interest to it, but it's the underlying relationships and um, use of language I just loved. and. I was excited when I finished it to realize it's part of what will be a quartet the season. So I read fall and fall, and now maybe we'll get to read winter in winter. So that I highly recommend. Um, the book, I haven't read it yet, so I'm very much looking I forward to it. I have recommended it to you. Yes, and I'm if you don't like it, then you can say this on the... Starting. Um, the book that I'm currently reading, and I actually often have more than one, but right now I think is the only one... No, that's not even fully true. But, one I'm most actively um, reading is a much harder book for me. It's called The Iceberg. And folks who saw your November, nonfiction November tag will see this one. That's where I learned about it. It's in um, an autobiography, a memoir of a woman whose husband died of glioblastoma. Um, it is poetic. Um, it is raw in its capturing of emotion. Um, of her feelings and the confusion and the confliction, conflictedness, but also the beauty um, and love um, and family. Um, she's an artist by, I think, profession, and I assume, I don't, I don't know her work, but my, my sense is that she is a visual artist, but the artistry in this writing is breathtaking. Um, it's a little painful, actually. Um, 
but in a good and I hope healing way. I'm about a third of the way through it, so I'll let you know more. Um, I had to steal it from your pile, your non-fiction November pile, but I had, um, I appreciate you lending it to me. It's it's really wonderful. Reader, I married him. <laughs> Actually, you married him and made him a reader. <laughs> Thinking about the, the two books that I'm reading now um, and all of these questions and the fact that I was not a reader and I am now, I also realize listening to myself on all the books I've said that there's a theme there. And I would have said when I was when we first met and, and for quite a while afterwards, I think, I was a plot driven reader. Um, I read a lot of mysteries and other fiction, but the story was what did it. And Harry Potter is an example of that. Um, but as I've matured and as we've matured, I think I've moved more towards loving books for their language and the ability of sentences to sparkle. And I love a bit of magical realism, and that's from Gabriel Garcia Marquez, but now all the way through Autumn. Um, and even in the poetry of um, the iceberg, that the my reading habits have changed um, because of you as well. Oh. So thank you for that. Well, thank you for joining me here today. It's been my pleasure. See you soon on Hannah's Books. John Steinbeck's uh, Leaves of Grass. It's one of... <laughs> Sorry. That's a big typo there. Um, mm -hmm.